Let's start by talking about linear approximation as a concept. So we have a function that is differentiable, so it has a derivative, at least on an interval i, containing a point a. Then we can find the linear approximation as long as it has a derivative on that interval. So it can't have a sharp corner or a cusp, uh, discontinuity or vertical tangent. But if it's differential, we can find a linear approximation for that function f at a given by this function. So we're going to call the linear approximation L of x. We're going to plug in the point that we're interested in to the function. Plus, we're going to take the derivative at that point times x minus a. And this is going to work for all x in that interval i where we're differentiable. So when we do this, our linear approximations can be off. How to calculate how far off they are from the actual value is called percent error. We're not going to do too much with percent error because the idea is we want to be able to approximate values without a calculator in this section, and to calculate percent error, you do need a calculator. But just if you're curious of how far off you are from the answer, you would do 100, to make it into a percent, times the approximation you found, minus the exact answer, which you would need a calculator to figure out, divided by the exact answer. That'll tell you how far off as a percent you were. But the idea of linear approximation is to figure out values that we couldn't normally figure out with a without a calculator. So for example, if you want to figure out e to the point 0, 0.06, we're going to use the fact that e to the 0 equals 1. So we will choose a value that is close to the value we're trying to evaluate, and we should be able to calculate it without a calculator. So normally I can't do e to the point 0, 0.06 in my head without a calculator, but I know anything to the zero power is one. So we'll use a specific value a that we can do in our head to figure out a value that we couldn't figure out um, in our head before. So another example is I don't know what the square root of 15.8 is, but I can use the fact that I know the square root of 16 to figure that out. So we'll use close values that we can calculate without a calculator. So just to get a visual idea of what this looks like, we're going to have some function f of x that has a derivative, so I'm going to draw it without any sharp corners or anything. Here's my function f of x. And say I don't know a specific value, so I'm going to call this value a, and then its y value, we can call it f of a. We don't know what this is without a calculator, so we create our own linear approximation function, l of x, to approximate that. Here's y equals l of x. So notice our linear approximation far away from a isn't as close to the graph. There's a pretty big gap. But close to a, it is going to be a very close, similar y value. So we're not going to use e to the 0 to calculate e to the 10th, because that's too far away. But we can use it to calculate e to the point 0, 6. Similarly, we're not going to use the square root of 16 to evaluate the square root of 21, because that's pretty far away. So this is the tangent line. Something we've talked about a lot in calculus is a tangent line at x equals a. That's what we're visualizing here. And again, we're going to write that same formula, that L of x. We're going to find it by plugging in a, a value that we can without a calculator, taking the derivative and plugging in a, and then multiplying it by x minus a. And that's going to give us a linear function that we can plug in a close x value to in order to find an approximation.